And if you take a look at this coil, it is so, so dirty. This thing is completely clogged. Wow, I can't believe this. What's going on guys? Today I'm out here trying to save my heat pump. I've noticed in the last few days when it got colder outside, we began to use the heater and the air coming out of the heater vent just wasn't that hot. It actually felt kind of cold. So doing a little bit of research, I found that, hey, a heat pump works in a little, slightly different way. And so although that air may feel cold, it's because your body temperature is 98.6 degrees and the air may be 85 or something like that. Then a few days later, all of a sudden, the air coming out was about 105 degrees and it felt nice and toasty. But then last night, the air felt cold. It felt literally like it wasn't doing anything. And I thought again, back to maybe the thing knows what it's doing and it's back down to that 85 degree temperature for a reason. Who knows, energy saving, I don't know. So this morning I decided to come out to the unit while it was running and take a peek. And what I saw was ice formed around the entire coil, the condensing coil out here, a, a giant block of ice. Obviously that shouldn't be. So in my best guesstimation, I think that this coil is extremely dirty and the condensing fan here is trying to suck air through there. And so because this is a heat pump, it's the coil is cold and it's actually not having enough airflow because it's blocked up with a bunch of gunk and that coil is just pulling the moisture out of the air and freezing it, turning itself into a block of ice. You can see just how wet this all is because the ice is actually melting. And you can also see, you know, from mowing the lawn and everything um, that this is pretty dirty, but I guess we'll really see how dirty it is once I get these panels off. So to start, it looks like we have a couple of screws up here and some more along the bottom. And I think my suspicion has been confirmed. Here is that panel removed. Today we're working on cleaning the condensing coils on this unit you see behind me. I wanna preface this by saying I am not a professional. Please don't take my word for it. Do your own research and come to your own conclusions. And if you take a look at this coil, it is so, so dirty. Now imagine this fan trying to pull air through this coil. It's just not going to happen too efficiently. And so therefore the condensation builds up, turns into ice and the whole unit basically doesn't function the way it's supposed to. This thing is completely clogged. Wow. I can't believe this. Okay. Well, I think I was right. This coil, is completely plugged up. I mean, I don't know what this stuff is. It looks like pet hair. It looks like grass. It looks like just general dander from the air. The good thing is, is that I caught it in time, I think. The fact that it was a solid block of ice means that the compressor is still functioning. And so I simply turned the unit off and let the ice thaw out on its own. You don't wanna pour hot water or anything like that because it'll shock it and could crack it. If you're faced with a similar situation where you have a block of ice out here, let it defrost on its own. But man, I hope this was the problem because it looks like that's exactly what it was. You can see it looks like we got some kind of wasp nest up there. And just looking in this cavity here, it is very, very dirty especially down there, especially on the bottom here where the grass would be kicked up at it from mowing. And here is the other side and you can see it is the same story, completely caked. This whole coil probably flows about 25% of the air that it's supposed to like this. This is not good at all. I'm gonna go get my shop vac and begin the process of cleaning this off. The first tool I'm gonna to use is my rigid shop vacuum. This is a pretty good high powered vacuum. And I'm gonna begin by using this attachment here. Now, if you're watching this and trying this yourself, you need to know that these little fins are very, very important with how they're spaced. These should not be bent or moved at all. So being that this end here is actually a hard plastic, I'm gonna to have to be very, very careful when vacuuming this gunk off of this coil. Here we go, let's see how good this thing does. I'm gonna get all this stuff here and we'll see what the difference is. Pretty good job there. Now let's just say you don't have a vacuum like this or one that can even reach this sort of an area. A soft bristle brush just like this one may be the ticket. We'll test it out here and you can see how much crud is on this coil. If I very gently 
just rub it down the coil. You can see how effective this is. And just look at that difference. It might even be better than the vacuum. And here's this one side of the coil completely done just with the brush. And you can see how effective it was. And I didn't really mess up any of these little fins. Some of these fins you see bent here were already bent when I came in. Some of them I may have bent, but I think overall it's in very good shape. I'm still gonna take the vacuum and vacuum out stuff like this. And even up top here, there's a bunch of crud under that lip. I've now cleaned the entire surface of the condensing coil here. And you can see there is still quite a bit of dirt within those coils. They're a little bit wet, so it's actually making it show up a little bit easier. But you can see close up that there is dirt within the fins there, and we are gonna clean that out. I used a combination of this brush and this vacuum. You can see some of the fins here are bent, but we should be able to bend those back pretty easily. The next step in my process is to soak the entire coil with a simple green solution. Now this isn't straight simple green, this is diluted. Then we're gonna simply take our hose and wash it off. But I'm gonna go ahead and just spray down the entire surface of the coil to try to remove some of the dirt that's lodged deep inside. All right, I think that'll do it. Now that I've covered the entire surface of the coil with this simple green solution, I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. While I'm waiting for the simple green to work, I decided to remove the panel on this unit here. Now this guy is very new, probably less than six months old. And in that time, look how dirty it actually is. You can see it's not quite as dirty as the other one, but look at the buildup down here. We need to get this stuff out of here. So I'm gonna do the same simple process on this unit here. And in case I didn't mention it, I turned off the breakers for both units. And just like the bigger unit, we got this one fully cleaned out with the vacuum and now we're ready to spray down with the simple green. It's been about 15 minutes and now I'm going to spray down the coils with this simple garden hose. Now, just like me, your first thought might be to go ahead and grab the pressure washer. But as I was showing you, these cooling fins are extremely fragile. That pressure washer could actually bend them over and ruin them. So don't do that. A simple garden hose is all you'll need. And all I'm gonna do is simply just spray down the entire coil, something like that. From the top down, we're just trying to get all of that cleaning solution out of there and we're trying to get all of that dirt to wash out with it. Okay, we're just about done and the coils are all shiny and clean. I've already got this unit put all back together, but there is one last thing we need to do. You can see this is one of the panels off of the larger unit. And if I take it and turn it around, well, you can see just how dirty it is on the inside. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the coils. I'm gonna take this brush and just brush it off just to give this thing a fighting chance at working 100% when I start it back up. Okay, everything is now done and put back together. And the only thing I have to do is flip those breakers. Here I am back at the thermostat inside the house. We're gonna kick this unit on and see what happens. Right now you can see it's 70 degrees in the house. We have it set to heat to 74. And out here at the unit, we can see that it is running. And yes, that coil is extremely clean compared to what it was. All right, taking a look at the thermometer here, you can see we are currently at about 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just sitting right over the vent. The unit's been running for probably about seven, 10 minutes or so. And here we are at the return, and I just wanted to show the condition of my filter. This filter's probably been in here for about two weeks now, although there is a little dust there. Overall, it's a pretty clean filter. Back at that same vent, we can see that our temperature temperature has risen. We are now at 102.7. So this is a definite improvement. And here in the kitchen, testing another vent that's a little closer to the unit. You can see we have 105.3 degree temperatures coming out of the vent. And just like that, we have heat again. I'm stoked. Well, like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm no air conditioning professional. So make sure to do your own research and perhaps call a professional. But hopefully this video helped to shed some light as to why you need to keep an eye on your outside condensing unit and also keep it clean. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I'm Jimmy for General Expert, and I will see you in the next one.